So now I'd like to introduce you to our next presenter who will be joining us virtually online. And we can see him very clearly on both sides of me. So Nicholas from the National Malifau Recovery Team, he's going to talk to us today about the value of community interest, volunteers, and telling the story. Please welcome Nicholas. Thank you very much. Um, it's always a bit weird not seeing everyone when I'm talking, but I'm gonna assume that everyone can hear me correctly. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the land and the traditional families of the Uganda region, where I'm now in Southeast Queensland and the elder past, present and emerging. And uh, so yeah, I'm the communications officer for the National Mapfire Recovery Team. I'm based in Southeast Queensland, and I'll be talking a little bit about those three topics, the value of community interest, volunteers, and telling the stories. Um, you've, I'm sure you've now seen all the great talks from Liz, Michael, and Joe, which uh, have uh, touched on the first two topics, the community interest and the volunteers. So I'll, I'll go over these and then go into, into my main area, which is the telling the stories. Uh, all right, so basically, the, um, for us, the value of community interest, it's really about raising the profile of the threatened species. Uh, for us, it's the Malifal, of course, but um, it's really about the fact that if people um, don't know about a specific species, they don't, they don't really care for it, and, and that's uh, applicable for all threatened species, all species across the board. And uh, the other way, really, the, the, that is really of, uh, of value is the providing ways for interest member of interested members of the community to engage with conservation work. It's, it's really presenting them with options and, uh, and how they can be involved because uh, having volunteered a lot uh, over the years, I know how sometimes how daunting it can be when you, you sort of want to do it, but uh, you don't know what's, what's needed or what's required, if you can do it or not. So how the, that's how we try and bridge the, the gap between what the community like wants and uh, what we can offer. So we, what we can do, we can offer interested community members to become active volunteers. So through a range of activities that can be done by them, that can that can be attending event, uh, helping with a range of things. But for us, it's mainly about uh, field surveys and camera trap image analysis. So I'll go into those in a bit more detail before, but if you've seen Marcus' presentation and, and a lot of other ones, you've seen that's the volunteers and are really the backbone of, um, of all those uh, incredible surveys that uh, people are doing and uh, the immense amount of data that, that's been collected by volunteers. Other things for us uh, was providing a range of support. Uh, so providing a range of options for the community to support us, uh, including uh, donation options uh, through our websites. And uh, something new that we've done in the past year is the purchase of merchandise. So it's it's basically a donation, but with with uh, they they're getting something else. It's slightly different. And um, so yeah, so we've got this uh, this very uh, amazing uh, artist that drew this uh, retro Malifal logo for us that we could use for a new merchandise. So, uh, I heard before that Joe is wearing his t-shirts. I'm really proud of him for that. Thank you very much. I'm wearing mine today as well. Uh, and those sort of things, um, uh, there's a lot of community interest uh, in, uh, in, in those items, in the merchandise that show the, the species they love or the, the fact that they've worked with. And that doesn't just apply to, to Malifal, but being present in that, that scene of sort of nature, wildlife and, and volunteering around Australia, there's a, there's a massive, massive interest in that sort of, uh, in those sort of item and they can be a, a good starting point to raising some additional funding for for projects so that's that's the way we went uh, about it uh, so this is our what we did uh we built a small shop very very simple shop that has uh three or four different options that people can get and um and um and so sort of we, we knew there was community interest because we often often got before we launched it comments on social media about Oh, do you have any merchandise? Do you have any any other ways to support you? Can we get a T-shirt, a hat, or things like that? So that's one of the things that decided us to 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 do that. the The main requirements for our shop was to to be fully automated, no stock needed, and the range of color fully automated and no stock needed because we do not have the resource to have a huge stock and buy everything in advance and, and all that sort of stuff. So we did uh, we did set up our shop with an Australian um, printer and, and provider that does 
everything by themselves. So basically we've set up the shop and then when people go on our website, there's a link to the shop, they buy everything is done without any input from us. They can choose the color, they can choose the type, the type of logo they want, if they want a tote, the t-shirt, or if they want um, a mug to put their tea in or their coffee. And um, and yeah, so we it took a little bit to get that set up, but it's, it's worked really well and it's really helped um, sort of uh, getting some additional funding, but also getting some some people interested in the Malifal. I've had several examples where uh, bird photographers uh, that really love Malifal got the t-shirts and uh, I, I've got an email afterwards, people saying, oh, so that person at that outing uh, with that t-shirt, I would like love to have one, but also I would be interested in like volunteering and things like that. So not only does it provide a way for the community to, to give donations and like increase our funding, it's also get them more involved and give them a point of contact for them to, to start doing things for, for Mali Fowls. Uh, we also recently got uh, got some stickers done that we have uh, on the, on the website with a very similar uh, frame of mind why why we did it. But there is a massive massive demand for wildlife stickers in the, in this community around Australia. Again, not just Mali fowl, but uh, I, I'm guilty of having an incredible collection of every time I see an NGO or an NRM group or someone having stickers uh, that represents the, the the critter they're working with. I just get a few. So that's, uh, that's we just recently started this and they're, they're doing really well and people are really excited we've got the same artists to to do the drawings for us again and, and i think they look they look really nice so um, i won't spend too much time on this because like, like i said liz michael and joe have done a great job of talking uh, about this but um so in summary it's really about raising the species profile through any way uh, possible really just whether it's through like the, the, the merchandise or providing them a, a place to, to sort of a, start the discussion about how they can help and, and what the, the Malifal recovery team needs help with. And uh, so also providing a new source of volunteers for the field, uh, for field and the analysis. And I'll talk about the analysis a little bit later because it was very, uh, very helpful in these uh, COVID times and the raising funds via the donations uh, or, or the shop. So as again, as you was mentioned before, the, the the volunteers do an incredible job. It, it's um, it just wouldn't be possible without this this the, the amount of people that donate their time to the outs and uh, and survey for for the mounds. It's just it's just incredible. And I hope that when things reopen a little bit, I'll be able to partake in a, in one of them. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's it. The, the, it's incredible. I've just, I don't, being on the communication side of things, I don't deal with huge amounts with the, the database, but I've seen and I've been part of discussions and the, the sheer volume of data that gets imported every year. It's, it's really, it's really amazing. This is uh, something that we've done a lot this year uh, with, the, with the volunteers. So we have provided an option because people, not everyone can do the ground truthing surveys and everything. And now that the borders are closed and everything is, we have these options because we do have an incredible amount of camera trap data that need to be analyzed. And um, through through a project that we've set up on Zooniverse, we've just uploaded a lot of um, a lot of photos that need to be tagged with either. That's what interface looks like. So the photos need to be tagged with nothing, a human, a kangaroo, a pig. There is tutorials and we've provided a range of different as well, video tutorials. And uh, when people now inquire on our website, there's like a little box where they can be like, oh, I want to inquire about the volunteering on the field or volunteering remotely from my computer. And there's been quite the uptake and on the doing from the computer because uh, I think that having all these tutorials really help as well. People don't find it as daunting. They just don't give an URL or something like I'll deal with it. They have all the support that they need to be able to go through and click. And we've had uh, the first batch, if my memory is right, of 10,000 photos, but that was done in a record time so quickly that we had to put some more photos shortly after because uh, only a handful of volunteers went through 10,000 photos really quickly. They just they just enjoyed and that. And, and I think people are giving people the option of volunteering from their own home and they still make them like it's still very useful information has really helped in these COVID times. And then I'll go into the telling the story, which is what I do, what I do the most uh, through the social media, the websites, the blog, and the uh, and the newsletter. So basically, well, our approach is to be present uh, on a broad range of uh, social social media. So we, there basically was there wasn't a lot 
done uh, a little bit more than a year ago before I joined. And so my role was to really try and raise the profile of the Malifal across uh, the different social media platforms that were already set up, which is Facebook, Twitter, and, uh, and Instagram. And, uh, and through that, we've had some uh, incredible uh, response and an engagement for the, from the community. Um, having, having worked uh, for a range of different NGOs on a range of different uh, species and managing their social media, the, the community behind the, the Mali fowl is one of the most engaged I have ever seen uh, across all the species I've worked with. It's incredible that any, any post, any type of content that, that goes out, uh, people love it. People ask questions. People share it. People are just there. They just want more. So it's been it's been quite incredible. Uh, so yeah, we've had one year, pretty much only one year of activity on social media, and it, we've increased the followers by near 100 percent across all the all the channels. Um, what we what we do, we're trying to be very um, very specific in in terms of the the format and uh, making sure that everything we do go, goes out in the specific format that's dedicated to that specific platform to, to sort of maximize our chances of reaching as many people and everything gets trickier every day with new algorithms and things like that but we just try and make sure that we cover all the bases and uh, and 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 it's worked really really well um, so another thing that we do a lot of by for to tell the story is um, blogs and uh, we've, we've produced a fair few blog posts over the years and uh, and things like volunteer experience stories these do really well and uh, this is something that can also be um, very well repurposed for all a range of the social media platforms so we get uh, a volunteer that had a great time on the on the fields uh, writes a, sort of a one page story about their time what they've done because that that not only does that show to other volunteers that the, the, we're active it shows them. It gives them an example of what is required in a in, in a day of volunteering, and uh, and they can then they can decide if that's for them or not. We have project stories. Uh, we just saw the Great Victoria Desert one that was mentioned in the previous talk, so it's down on our website as well. And uh, I was making sure that every time they had a little bit of reception, they would send me some. So I, was, I would pester them, so they would send me some photos and uh, some write up of the, of the day, so that I could share about that on the on social media. And uh, and partner stories as well, like when the when the when there is partners involved in a different surveys, we we talk about we talk about them and we ask them to to write a blog post. Because what I really like in terms of telling the story uh, about the blog post is that you can really really spread them and and reuse them and show them to people in a range of uh, platforms. So it's not just we get the blog post and it just lives on the website. We are slowly over the the following weeks repurpose it and make sure it's a uh, it's sort of tailored for the different places and get a lot out of them so that's so one of the one of our blog pages and so yeah we will have we have videos um when we have when people send us great videos of malifal that they've taken or camera trap footage of interesting behavior um things that do really well is the all, always uh, chicks and um, coming out of the mound and running away people seem to really love watching that um, we have one on monitoring. We have some of the small grants available in that in that sphere. We uh, we share about that as well. And uh, what's really good? So we've uh, we there used to be a, sort of a written newsletter for the for the Mali Fowler. We decided to go digital now because it just makes more sense for us because it's much easier to then direct people to the website, show them new content, show them video, and, and have a, a range of things that they can sort of click on and enjoy. The the one really good thing about the newsletter is that there is no algorithm. The subscribers can read whenever they want at the leisure. And in the past sort of year, year, two year, newsletters have become uh, extremely popular because of that. You don't have to deal with algorithm and you can, you can really see who reads and how people interact with your with your contents. You can link to your website, you can repurpose the blog post, and you can really keep the community updated. And um, it's been uh, it's been really good to have that tool. And we've done uh, five newsletters in a, in a year. So we try not to do too many. We try to sort of build up the content and then we release one so that people don't feel that they've been bombarded with, uh, with information. And uh, it's, worked, it's worked really well. And so what's our next step for this about telling the story and uh, something that we've been discussing and uh, that was mentioned in other talks as well is the volunteers trying you know keep keeping all this keeping all these volunteers interested and uh, the, it takes time to train volunteers as well you want them to come back you want them to feel included but you also want them to really 
see the value in the data they're collecting. They're, they're sweating out in the fields, collecting uh, all the things for you. So you really want them to, to have some uh, tangible and concrete feedback. And so over the next few months, what we're going to be doing is uh, I'll be going through the, the various reports that are created by the different areas uh, about Malifal surveying and uh, everything that's been done. And I'll transform that into infographics so that volunteers can really see and um, what, uh, where the data is being used, how it's being used, and, uh, and and really what we're doing with it, because that's a very important part of any sort of citizen science or project that requires volunteers. You want to keep people interested and uh, and involved. You really got to show that what they've done matters and uh, has really pushed to conservation and and helping Malifal. And um, that was, that's it for me. This is our handles. If you want to see more about everything. Um, that we're doing in, in our social media and uh, I'm behind uh, most of the accounts. If you have questions as well, you can send messages there or anything. But uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. Sorry, microphones just kicked in. Any questions from the audience? I think Nicholas, they're waiting for the, the challenge. Oh, I've got one over here. Bear with me while I take the microphone. Good day, Nicholas. Damien's my name. Uh, yeah, I'm just got a question. I'm not sure if you're able to answer, but I was just wondering as a recovery team, how much, um, how vocal are we on things that we see that need to be done? And, for example, uh, the dingo, current treatment of dingoes all around the place and, and their effect on fox behavior and cat behavior and all those things. Uh, do we speak up for things like that as well as things like fire management and the need to perhaps put that in the hands of people who know what they're doing more? Do we speak up about these things as, as the recovery team? Or? I think that's probably a question for the panel afterwards because I don't think I can answer that. I mean, because like, as, as I said, I deal with a lot of the, um, the creating the content and um, like making sure it goes in the right way and in the, the right format out and everything. But I'll be on the panel with, uh, with other people from the team afterwards. So I think we should have that uh, for the panel afterwards. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, then. Thank um, you. Thanks well, for your well, presentation too. Yeah, we'll save that question. That's a good idea, um, Damien and Nicholas. We've got a question at the back, Rochelle. Awesome work, Nico. I have a question. If there are other groups that are thinking about improving some of their online presence, so for a group of like the Malifal recovery team, how many hours do you, would you spend a week to produce the content, get it online, have a regular presence? Um, it, it will always come down also to the, the experience of the person doing it. But uh, for this specific task, I would say roughly uh, it takes me about five hours a week for everything that I've just mentioned, sort of either creating tutorials, creating content. Between five and eight hours a week is uh, what I'm allocated and, uh, and it's working quite well for, for that sort of thing. And uh, it's, if someone doesn't know all the, the tools or the, the scheduling software and things like that, nothing is, uh, is very complicated. But uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve, so it's gonna, it will be de depending on, uh, on, on the person. But someone that has the, the right experience uh, would be able to, to have a, a sort of a decent social media newsletter communication if they spend five to eight, so about a day a week, yeah, roughly. Great. Well, if we can all put our hands together, please, for Nicholas.